Hi everyone, happy winter. Today I'm going to show you how I installed this cheapo inline hot water heater. These videos are brought to you in part by our Patreon contributors. Our top contributors are TrueAquaponics.com, GreenLifePlanet.net, GlassBottleOutlet.com, and GrowPockets.com. Thanks for your support. So I wasn't going to uh, get into a big debate on the different styles of hot water heaters. There's a lot of them out there. Um, True Aquaponics makes an immersion one that's uh, pretty cool. And the Aquaponics source also sells uh, a setup that uses a, a tankless hot water heater. So those are actually uh, very good systems. This is just to uh, uh, help keep our water from freezing in the winter since I don't heat the greenhouse. It's uh, quite cold in here right now. It's about 25 degrees or so. Uh, we just had a snowstorm. The sun's finally coming out and it's just starting to warm, warm up now. Uh, so this is just a, a little tiny one. Uh, you can get much larger hot water heaters. So let's dig into this and see what's inside of it. All right, so let's take a look at this heater. Um, there isn't much to it, and you can tell from the fine quality control that they're building a better world. So you can tell they definitely pay attention to their detail on uh, how this is put together. So I'm gonna pop the cover off of this and show you what's on the inside. Okay, so what happens with this type? There's actually two safeties uh, built into this to make sure that it uh, doesn't overheat. The first is this little tube here, which is a uh, pressure switch. So it relies on a little bit of back pressure uh, to make sure that uh, the switch can engage. That's basically their flow monitoring. In fact, it came with this um, little coupling that goes on the the outlet of it and so by making the um, out a little bit smaller it will create some pressure inside of this when it's getting pumped uh, water getting pumped through it um, I'm not going to be using this I'll explain that a little bit later so what happens is the power comes in uh, goes through the switch so if there's not enough pressure the switch isn't engaged and thus won't power the uh, heating elements and then um, there's also a um, switch up in the cover so the power comes up into this switch and on the back side of this there is a um, temperature sensor which basically monitors the temperature of the tube so that way if there wasn't flow the switch failed or whatever or the flow is not fast enough um, the tube would heat up because the water isn't moving out of this and it would also uh, turn off that switch that breaks uh, again the circuit to the heating element and then um, the third part of this is there's this um, switch up in the cover here, which is the um, thermostat. It's just a regular boring turn thermostat, which then turns on and off the power. So then the power comes through, goes to the heating element, and then out. So this also has a through uh, heating element. You can see that it's just an open tube. And I went with this type of model uh, just so that if there is any debris that works its way through, it would reduce the risk of it getting caught up uh, on the heating element. If you use like a regular household water heater or something, um, those um, have a lot of uh, small spots on it so you get better um, heat exchange. Um, but this will do perfectly fine. And this is a nice uh, stainless steel uh, tube so there's no copper uh, getting into the system. So I don't have to run a heat exchange or anything. This thing was really cheap. It was about $150. As you can see, there really isn't much to it. Uh, so that's the inside of it. What I'm going to do is um, it came with with these uh, connectors that basically screw on to the front and the back. Um, this one has been machined out on the inside. I think it fits a one and a half inch pipe. I'm using two inch. Uh, so I'm actually not going to use these. And we're going to quickly void the warranty on this because what I'm going to do is uh, cut the flange off of this and remove the, uh, the fittings and then use a uh, one and a half inch to two inch uh, PVC uh, rubber coupler with this and this is just a hair small on this so what I'm going to attempt to do is heat this up in probably some boiling water so that way I can stretch it out once I cut this off I should be able to um, push that onto here 
and then tighten up the clamp and then I'll have uh, two two inch couplers. Now because of that um, I won't have um, really as much back pressure against this switch so I'm hoping that the um, all the piping going through the rest of the system will create enough back pressure um, to get it out to the fish tank. If not I'm just going to take this and, and override the switch. It's not really important enough for me to keep that in there. I'd like to keep it in, but if I have to remove it, I'll remove it. All right, I got the water all heated up here. Just drop these in for a few minutes. Heat them up, get it nice and soft. And you can see I've cut off the flanges on here and removed that and also filed it down so they're nice and smooth so nothing gets caught on them. All right, so let that heat up for a little while. Let's see how we can get that on there. Perfect, slides right on. I've already dug out some of the pipe. What my plan is, is to put the heater right here in line, take this coupling off, take the section of pipe out, cut it off here, and then re-add that pipe back in. Um, so it'll just be in line with that, and if I ever have to take this out, I can just take a small piece of pipe and uh, put it right back into here. Uh, so it's not too um, invasive with this. It should work out fine. And then I'll run power back up uh, to the uh, circuit breaker panel. This is the lowest area of the system, so it's going to hold water. So as soon as I release this coupling, it's going to fill this all up with water. Luckily, I don't have to do any PVC gluing in here so put the coupling back on it won't affect anything if it's wet in here it doesn't matter if you're ever doing work on existing plumbing work save yourself the aggravation and spend the seven dollars on a cable saw you'll make your life much much easier Now technically I'm installing this backwards, but I wanted to be able to see the little light on it when it was running, so it's going to go in like that. Some heaters you can't run backwards, but this one doesn't have any true flow switches in it, so it won't make much of a difference. At the end of the video, I'm going to leave a little explanation of different heating methods from electricity to propane and fuel oil. I'll leave the spreadsheet in my Patreon site too so you can download it. just wanted to show everybody the comparison of the different cost of heating water with different methods. Alright, I'll flood the system again, get some water going through this, make sure it's not leaking, turn on the pump and get the water circulating again and then I'll move on to doing the electrical part. All right, it's nice to see nothing's leaking, so I'll just fill this back in.
I'm not going to lecture you on the safeties of an electrical panel, so if you're not comfortable with working in one of these, hire an electrician. It will usually be worth the cost if you don't know what you're doing in here. All right, let's fire it up and see what happens. Okay, so I have it up and running and I wanted to show, I have my pump currently running at uh, four, five bars here and the light is on on the pump and if I actually slow it down a little bit, the light turns off because there's not enough back pressure in the system now. So I just need to close a valve uh, downstream a little a little bit if I want to uh, run this pump slower but as soon as I speed it up again the light will turn back on which means the heater's running so it looks like everything is good with it it's hard to really prove out that it's uh, running or not there's just so much water that runs through it you really don't get much of a temperature difference um, on the outside of the pipes but right now uh, I'm getting about 41 and a half degrees on the inlet and you know, 42 sometimes it hits 42 and a half so half a degree warmer going out than in at least on the outside of the pipe I'm sure the water on the inside of the pipes a little bit warmer than that but I don't have a uh, thermometer on the inside of the, the water line right here so I whipped up this spreadsheet. I'm hoping I'm accurate with my numbers. I wanted to compare some of the different uh, fuel methods. Here's electricity of what I installed. And then, of course, you can buy propane or natural gas. Here in the Northeast, a lot of people uh, heat with fuel oil. And also, uh, a lot of people throughout the country will use wood. And uh, we have a lot of oak here, so I use that in our comparison. So basically then from there I look up what the normal prices are and calculate out on a BTU basis uh, how much how many BTUs or what the cost is uh, per BTU. Sorry this whole uh, spreadsheet is in imperial units uh, for all of us uh, Yankees here in the US. <clears throat> so the system here that I have is currently about 5800 gallons and then I add in what the efficiency is of each of the heaters so if you take a heater that has let's say 150,000 BTU rating and it's only running at 84 percent efficiency your effective BTU heating is 126,000 so what that does is based off of the different size heater and it's hard to get them all the same I just added in um, how much it cost an hour uh, to run each heater if it was running uh, completely full bore. Uh, jumping back up to here, um, wood is actually very cheap uh, to, to heat with, so it's actually a, a good renewable source. Um, unfortunately, some of the emissions uh, isn't all that great, but it's getting much better, especially with some of the uh, secondary burners that they're putting into some of the heaters. So then to have a little bit of fun, if you wanted to uh, raise your uh, temperature by 10 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, with that 5,800 gallons, you need uh, 483,000 BTUs of uh, energy to raise that up 10 degrees. So if you take the uh, cost per BTU, <clears throat> each unit shows um, how much it would cost just to raise that temperature water. And again, these calculations don't take anything into effect with uh, dealing with heat loss. This is truly just a pure calculation of raising water temperature. Uh, so the cheapest way to heat is by wood here. Um, electricity, uh, especially in our area, is extremely expensive. Uh, so it's the most expensive way to heat the water. So ironically, it seems a little strange that um, I chose to heat with um, electricity, but I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. And these other three, between propane, natural gas, and uh, fuel oil, um, they fluctuate up and down depending on what the markets are. So depending on when you do an install, it could be cheaper or more expensive uh, for one of these or the other. And then it could just flip-flop on you. 
So once the system temperature is up to temperature, um, I did some estimations that, um, to maintain the temperature. Let's say I wanted to keep the temperature at around 45 degrees. I'd be um, on average on a daily basis uh, needing uh, 6,000 uh, BTUs to um, keep the water maintained. And based off those calculations on the size of the heater, uh, the electric heater would need to run 14 hours a day. These larger heaters uh, don't have to run uh, as often, so they're essentially oversized uh, for what I need to do uh, with my heating. So when, once you get into these bigger systems too, you're usually heating your air or, or more water or something. So the cost per day here is $8.10 on average um, or on a monthly basis $243 and again you can see it's substantially cheaper uh, to heat with some of these other methods. And then um, here's the savings if we did heat with those different methods um, obviously there's no savings since I'm comparing it against electricity um, but if I heated with wood I technically could save uh, $200 a month or $116 if I was heating with propane. Uh, here comes the interesting part though. Um, the cost of the heaters, uh, again, it's not a perfect apples to apples comparison. Uh, the cost of this heater, we'll put in $200. Uh, propane, I was looking at more of the uh, swimming pool type heaters, a little bit uh, larger setup. Fuel oil uh, heaters are usually a small furnace or boiler. Um, they get a little bit more expensive to uh, install. And then the outdoor uh, wood boilers, um, which we typically have in this area, uh, they can run you know, eight, ten, fifteen thousand dollars uh, depending on the size. So based off of that savings, we can figure out uh, what the return on investment is compared to heating with electricity. For example, if I install a propane heater, it's uh, 28 heating months of, uh, of time uh, to pay for that heater. So really, if I was heating just for three months, it's nine years for that propane heater to pay for itself versus that little uh, tiny electric heater. And 16 years for an outdoor wood boiler. Again, these are much larger heating systems, so you'd probably be using them for other uh, parts of heating. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't say it's a perfectly fair comparison, but you know, by changing these numbers up above, by getting a, a fairer heater in there, um, it might be a little bit better. But overall, um, seven to 10 years for a conventional heating, by that time you've probably worn it out and have to replace it. The boiler tanks, you might get 10 years out of it. So to put an outdoor wood boiler in just for heating the water uh, probably isn't worth it. Plus all the time it takes to um, cut the wood and, and get that uh, ready. So a little bit interesting on the year uh, return on investment. Plus this electric heater, it was quick and dirty, fast to install, um, and so in the long run for me, even though my monthly cost is more expensive to run, uh, the overall uh, savings um, isn't much more substantial uh, than using something else. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about uh, hot water heaters, and we'll see you next time.